The Change Officer Podcast's Future of Financial Services series is brought to you by Holly Wally, the world's first wallet as a service platform. Stay tuned to find out how Holly Wally can help you build your mobile wallet to increase revenue and reduce time to market. A recent research talks about that one to seven billion people are underbanked. The blockchain is a really good candidate for fixing or partially fixing or starting to fix this kind of problem. The majority of the innovation will happen in the crypto space. It has happened in the last decades in technology in the cloud. The banks are not uh, remaining aside because the banks are, they need to discover a game which is the real role that they have as custodian of the assets and the risk shifter, uh, taking the risk on behalf of the customer. Welcome to the Change Officer Podcast's Future of Financial Services series. In this series, we are deep diving into some of the hottest and most pivotal topics in the financial services industry right now, including personalization in financial services, embedded finance, and the mobile payment revolution. Join us as we seek the answers to critical questions such as what does the future hold for the financial services sector and where should we look for the next big disruptive idea. billion people globally are underbanked. In the MENA region more specifically, one in five adults do not have a bank account. The impact? In the words of one of our former guests, Andrew Gold, if you don't have a bank account, you are now cut off from so many of those financial services that are really critical to establishing wealth, building wealth and raising your station in life. In this episode, we are tackling the issue of financial inclusion with David Yeagers, the Executive VP and Head of Customer Experience and Platform Development for National Bank of Fujira. David dived into the factors that contribute to so many individuals being unbanked, how emerging technologies like blockchain and cryptocurrency can help, and what traditional financial institutions like banks can do to facilitate greater financial inclusion. I do hope you enjoy this conversation. Now, let's dive in. Welcome back to the Change Officer, David. Thank you. It's really good to have you here, man. Really happy to have you. Thank you very much. Um, I'm excited about this quick focus discussion that we're going to have. Um, We are tuning into the Change Officer Future of Financial Services series. um, And I would like to talk to you about a couple of things. Um, I want to start uh, with a topic that is probably on top of the agenda of many discussions, which is financial inclusion. Now, financial inclusion is probably one of the biggest uh, challenges of financial system today. Um, especially if you look at the region, I believe uh, around 69% of adults uh, still remain unbanked or underbanked. Now, why is this the case? Um, why is it important in the first place? And what are the instruments to reduce that <coughs> number to significantly lower uh, digits. Hmm. Look, this one is a very important and huge topic. First mm. of all, is uh, is permeating quite all the, the bank industry uh, overall. <clears throat> Just to give you a sense of the 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 magnitude of the, the financial inclusion, um, a recent research talks about that one to seven billion people are underbanked. They don't have a bank account. One to seven. 1.7 billion people overall in the globally. Wow. Right? That that means that um, um, that one over three adult people they don't have a bank account. They don't cannot access to the bank infrastructure. And um, another important data is that 35 percent of these guys um, are coming from developing countries. And um, and if you think about it, um, in this kind of recent research, you're talking about this a matter of trust and infrastructure that it could be but it's not so hard to understand the reason why um, just to give you some other data um, um, the united nation given that the this, this topic is so huge is so important they developed some um, software development goal in the last decades uh, to for all the country for, for, for letting everyone to create some kind of um, principle or guidelines to let the banks like all the players in the market to 
improve the financial inclusion. And they, specific, they specifically create this kind of soft development to create, of course, sustain, sustainable kind of economy and, uh, and environment and so forth. But, um, but they are going really uh, deep in that. Um, just another to give you the sense of what you're talking about. In, in MENA, in the Middle East, um, other kind of research, they claim to have a kind of level of 20% of financial inclusion. That means that one over five, they don't have a bank account. That's another big point. Mm. Uh, of course, in the Middle East, we have UAE that is the most uh, the, the highest one in terms of financial inclusion, 46%, if I recall it correctly. But we have also countries like Egypt or Morocco that they have uh, under 10% in terms of uh, financial inclusion. That is a really uh, big point. And it's surprising in today's <coughs> age. Absolutely, absolutely. Because if you, if you look also on the amount of um, number of... Uh, instruments that we have in terms of offering in the market. But still, there are some specific part of the population that is not able to um, to access in specific in, in instruments. What is the primary reason for that? Hmm. Look, um, if, give an example. Um, if you took one of the um, main reason in which people can use the bank infrastructure is for transferring funds uh, between people. Right, and one of one part of this is the remittances. When you went to, when you want to transfer your funds from your country to another, maybe sure. region country, they're called remittances. The amount of the cost uh, for accessing to bank infrastructure to ma- or other financial player that allow you to make this kind of transfer for the the, the amount of um, checks and uh, and um, exchange in terms of currencies still is quite high. Okay. This is one of the reasons that uh, poor, poor people are not able to um, access directly to this kind of infrastructure. So in essence, it's about how the financial system is structured at the current state. Yeah, but there's also a paradox, for example, because uh, if you look at um, some African countries, uh, if you look at the, the M-Pesa, M-Pesa try grow and, and happen in, in, in Africa because... Uh, of the absence of the bank f- infrastructure. They allow you to transfer funds between two phones, uh, jumping completely, skimming completely the bank infrastructure. Um, and the, 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 the thing of the, um, the cost that are burdening this kind of um, fund transferring, it's a, it's a, it's a huge thing because, um, because if, think, if you think how the poor guy uh, can transfer the funds, maybe... The majority of them, they are using different non-financial ways to mm-hmm. transfer, much more risky, because uh, transferring funds in a bank infrastructure, I assure you that people in, involved in the transfer are recognized, identified, that the fund, tra- that the fund transfer are reaching effectively the, uh, the, the other part of the um, recipient of the, of the account. So it's, um, it's really, really important. And mm-hmm. um, there's a, um, a set of... Um, um, principle, but also actions that un- different regions are doing it in terms of regulation for opening uh, the bank f- infrastructure and uh, to offering more instruments to the people. For, uh, so what would be the main, br- just briefly, um, what are the instruments to, to make this happen? Mm. In the last decades, for example, um, we had one of the m- main innovation in the technology that is blockchain. Right. Is the is one of the main um, big infrastructure that has been created that you can look at like something quite opposite of the bank infrastructure, but it's not. It's something that is allow you to transfer assets in a uh, untrust uh, environment in the safest ways as possible. Uh, and if you look at the blockchain in this way, the blockchain is a really good candidate for um, fixing or partially fixing, or starting to fix this kind of problem. Mm-hmm. Um, that's, then we have also a kind of other kind of problem in terms of adoptions, but that's another story. Yeah, so b- blockchain as an evolving <coughs> technology is an underlying, obviously, technology of crypto and decentralized finance. So if you bring right. crypto and decentralized finance into a conversation, um, combination of the two could be one of the possible solutions for, um, uh, such a, such, for, for such a problem. 
what are the main factors? Obviously, there's a lot of hype about both at the moment. Mm. And although there's a lot of hype, but a lot of noise, very few people are actually familiar with the topic. Um, what are the main factors influencing the adoption of crypto? Um, and then also adoption of decentralized finance um, as, as a business. Um, and on the top of that, what are the opportunities for the banks here? Uh, which is, you know, not, notoriously there is a discussion, you know, what are banks thinking about crypto and decentralized finance, etc. So first of all, can crypto and decentralized finance solve the problem of financial inclusion? And then secondly, what banks see here as an opportunity? It depends. It depends. It, 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 as, as I tell you, is a really good candidate uh, to fixing the problem, mm -hmm. solve the problem, also partially for solve the problem. Is the, 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 the point is that how you... Um, um, introduce this kind of product in the market. If you talk with the entrepreneur, if you're talking with a practitioner, a product uh, kind of practitioner, um, they know how to launch a product in the market and how um, drive and, and, and try to get the majority of the population in your products. But from a scientific perspective, there are some kind of theory in the framework model that you can apply, deriving from decades of research uh, in, in, the, in the academy, in the research kind of side, in, in the science. Um, some of them, for example, the TIM, technology um, acceptance model, for example. The other one is the um, um, innovation in diffusion. Uh, all these kind of models, they're bringing on the table different kind of way in which you can look at, uh, at the problem and how you know which are the main factors that can drive the adoption from uh, uh, different kind of targets of uh, of your of your of your customer, for example, because the individual, for example, the consumer can have different kind of perspective. The merchant and the small business and the business can have another one, mm -hmm. different kind of interest. But overall, um, they are typically listing which are the the main factor. For example, the uh, the perceived risk is one of the construct that uh, is mm, typically part of this kind of model. So how you um, managing the interface and the information in your product uh, for, um, make, for, for making that your customer is perceiving less risk as possible. Mm -hmm. The amount of information that you, how you manage information, for example. The expected performance is another construct. Um, the customer experience that said like that is something generic. Sure. But for example, is a reiteration of the feedbacks that the information that you have when you are Doing the first, using the first time the, the instruments. The price value is another uh, kind of, the, the value for the price in using this kind of uh, products. There is a lot of yeah. um, frameworks. So that. with the financial inclusion being so low and so many people being unbanked and underbanked, they don't really have a lot of choice. So when you introduce to them crypto and the central finance, I'm, I'm not sure how, how much are they evaluating the risk factors if, if they don't have any, any choice. Do you see crypto and decentralized finance potentially solving a problem for many? Potentially, yes, because, uh, because the, the cryptos can be exchanged mm -hmm. over, the, over, over the, the blockchain, um, in theory, for free, sure. without, uh, without fees. But that's depending how you're implementing the products. Yeah. Okay? Uh, if, you're, if, for example, you're using a public blockchain, could, that, that could be some kind of fees. Uh, but but again, th this kind of fees can need to be lower than the, the current fees that on average you are paying for making a remittance. It's mm -hmm. that, for example, Absolutely. in this region yeah. is, a, is a kind of range from, if I recall it, 4.7% of the amount that you are transferring to 6 to 2%. Mm -hmm. That is huge kind of... Uh, and uh, do you see range. banks stepping into this space? They are trying. They are trying. Um, Still, the, the amount of the things, because of the regulation, mm -hmm. that need to be followed by all the financial institution and the banks, they are imposing the bank to make several kind of checks and, and, and controls and, and, and different steps that, in a way, they are overcomplicating the, um, the transfer. And this is burdening also the, the transfer for, with cost. Mm -hmm. right? um, in, this, in this kind of... Um, um, field, many fintechs, they are starting to re-engineering the, the value chain, looking at the problem in a different, uh, different from a different mm -hmm. perspective. Um, so maybe there are some um, kind of fintechs that are creating new kind of ecosystem of nodes of players 
um, that using, for example, blockchain, that are exchanging, enabling fi- um, financial remittances between the customer of these kind of nodes, for example. This is an, mm-hmm. an example. Uh, Visa, that one of the main player uh, in payments uh, from, from decades, uh, 50 years. Uh, sure. Yeah. They, they are starting to look at the problem much more deep and uh, reshaping some kind of products that they have. Hey everyone, sorry for jumping in. We'll be back with the rest of the conversation shortly, but I wanted to take a moment to thank the sponsor of our show, Holly Wally. Within the next two years, 4 billion people will be using digital wallets and the global mobile payments market size is expected to hit US $5.5 billion by 2024. It's more important than ever for financial service providers to offer a digital wallet service to their customers. Enter Holly Wally, the world's first wallet as a service platform that allows any financial service provider to build their own digital wallet as efficiently and cost effectively as possible. Whether you're a fintech, retailer, banking institution, or insurance carrier, Holly Wally has all the elements you need to build your own company's ideal digital wallet in a matter of minutes and manage it on an ongoing basis. To find out how Holly Wally can increase your customer engagement and revenue or to register for a demo, visit hollywally.com. The link can be found in the show notes of this episode. And now enjoy the rest of this conversation. So when we look at what what's going on over the last decade, let's say fintechs are, you know, popping up and growing uh, at a very, you know, uh, fast pace, starting from the West and now in the Middle East as well, there is quite a lot. Um, there is crypto, there is decentralized finance, there are talks about um, central central bank digital currencies. There's a lot of emerging technology that is disrupting the whole space and un- unlocking some, you know, major new opportunities going forward. Um, where do you see the biggest opportunity for growth in the banking sector uh, when it comes to the next generation of banking and, and payments in general? Mm. Uh, first of all, given that we are coming from... Uh, um the, cons- the, the, the kind of um, confrontation between the blockchain, cryptos, and the banks. Let me tell you that in my perspective, from my point of view, um, the, the, despite I'm convinced that in these decades, these decades there will, uh, the majority of the innovation will happen in the crypto space. has happened last decades in technology in the cloud. Mm-hmm. The many th- main things that happened last, last decades were happening in the, in the cloud. The same kind of trend, the same kind of behavior, I'm, I'm, I'm seeing that is happening in the crypto. So the new things are happening in the crypto space. But again, the, the, the banks are not uh, remaining aside because the banks are, they need to discover again, which is the real role that they have as custodian of the assets and, uh, and the risk shifter, uh, taking the risk on behalf of the customer. Uh, the, the, imagine that the bank has a, um, as a big locker, where you you, uh, you you put your asset and you trust them that the things are not happening to, to to your assets. This is not like that with the crypto. Absolutely, okay? because you in the crypto owning your private key, you are becoming your own bank, right? And that is the main paradigm. Mm-hmm. Uh, so, when the bank will they will realize that they need to leverage the the dimension that strengthening the 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 the, 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 the the, the kind of role that they have as a custodian of the assets uh, in opposite of the, the the crypto paradigm that you are becoming as a consumer, your bank, then I think that will something will change. But in the meanwhile, in the meanwhile, I think that there are some kind of short term and medium term uh, clear trends. Imagine look that uh, tomorrow when you want to open an account in some kind of platform, like for example, could be Amazon, as a merchant, you want to start to sell your products in in in, 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 in that kind of platform. Platform during the the, the onboarding process, uh, after the few steps, the Amazon is starting to tell you, oh, oh by the way, okay, I will open your account in Amazon, but what about you want to open also a bank account? Uh, in this kind of in the in the same process, you will be able to open a bank account remaining on Amazon. So that is um, it's called bank as a service. Bank will um, need to start to look at the different uh, external digital platform where the consumer are going there for different kind of uh, needs like uh, buying stuff or selling stuff or uh, uh, different kind of experience to plug these services in a transparent way 
to be part of the experience of the, of the customer. What is also called embedded finance, correct? Correct, correct. Embedded finance. This is the first, the first kind of that, w- that is happening, actually, is happening. Um, what are the industries that you will see adopt this trend most rapidly or they're already adopting? It's already adapting. All the digital space is, uh, is going through the platformification of the products that says like that is something <laughs> that says you know, nothing, but the way in which you are um, creating, develop a product and launching a product uh, in, through a platform is quite different uh, from launching in one loop the, the product uh, in, uh, in a kind of uh, from inside to outside way. No, absolutely. Um, it's, it's, it's a lot different. Also the dynamics. Uh, usually we, we, we say... Um, from a minimum value product, you have to have a minimum value community that is able to use your product, that is, is shifting your perspective in which you are doing your MVP, mm. right? So the banks need to look at and, and, and increase the instruments to understand learning how the platformification of the products and the digital platform are working, um, having the, the instruments to, to change. Second, um, quite important, they need to, um, the, the, the customer nowadays is already happening. They need to have much more fun mm-hmm. when, uh, when they are using the bank services. I recall that it was very clear. There was um, another recent research that, that 52% of the customer, one of the two of the customers, they say they, they do not have fun when, uh, when they're using the bank services. So in this, it's, it seems something um, trivial, but it's not. Because usually the bank are always introspective um, enough for expecting correctly, rightly, the, the, the regulation and the, the, the compliance with central bank. That is good because we have to, because the banks are protector of uh, the assets of the customers. So they have to do it. But they can do it also in, another, in, in a different way, right? Keeping much more in, in account the the experience of the customer mm. um, and um, the third one that point very very important is that to do that to, to, to create um, to keep into account the experience of the customer you need to um, read a bit more the behavior of your customer when he's using your products or services and to do that you have to use the right tools you have to do you have to have a right infrastructure that give you um, the right amount of, that allow you to read the data correctly, that what is happening in your, in your infrastructure. And many, many banks are, they have legacy, uh, they have uh, core banking slow, core banking of the previous, previous two, three, four generation, that they don't allow you to see, to read the data correctly. They are not data driven, essentially. So that's another challenge that, uh, that is happening that, uh, in the bank industry. I hear you. So having all of this in mind and you being in the industry for a while now, um, if I were to ask you or if you were to start a new venture, uh, if you were to you know, take the leap and, 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 and start your own business, what do you believe is the problem uh, worth solving in this space that can potentially unlock the next, you know, globally uh, successful company? I say a bit more, again, a bit more general because depending from the implementation of the single product, but in general, the, uh, the platformification of the products is very evident, is essential now in, the, in these decades. Um, and um, and in, in general, the eco- creating or be part of an ecosystem, of an interne- interconnected uh, single part of a, an ecosystem, it will all be is becoming very important. Because as a bank, for example, um, you can you cannot more anymore push your product in the market. You need to enable people through your platform or being part another being part of another ecosystem to enabling the business of the people or enabling the expectation of the people mm. uh, in this different kind of perspective. Eh? Uh, because again. Um, it, it, the, the normal banking business model is not working like that, and the mindset <laughs> mainly of the people that are working in banks are not are not uh, in that kind of uh, side. So they need to evolve. 
Interesting. Let's see. We're going to keep uh, keep an eye on the space. Absolutely. David, thanks for taking the time to come on the show. Thank you very much. Uh, for me. We're going to stay in touch. Everyone, thanks for staying and tuning in. This was David Jägerson from uh, National Bank of Fujira, head of customer experience on a couple of interesting topics like uh, financial inclusion, crypto, uh, and the opportunities uh, for growth. Stay tuned. There is another great episode coming out really soon. Take care. Thank you very much. Thank you.